Okay, hello everyone. This is Yu Yu Yuan, extra distance dentist from IAC Call Lab Coast. Here I will show the basic quadra XRD training on Booker D2 Phaser. We have two XRD rooms, one is 337 and one is 336. The machine we will give training in D2 Phaser, which is located in 337. And this is some, our sample preparation area. For the samples which are toxic or which have a strange smell, it's forbidden to prepare here. You should go to 336 uh, and you should use the film pool. Here you can see we have different uh, sample holders. First uh, we have three for powder uh, samples. Uh, why we have uh, three sample holders? Because you can see the center of the sample holder. It is for different uh, volume. Uh, it's related to the amount of your sample. And we also have another for bulk materials. For example, some thin film. If your uh, amount of your sample is not enough, we also have the zero background sample holder. Yeah. Okay, for the preparation of the powder sample, if the crystal size of your sample is more than uh, several hundred nanometers, I think you should use the, the motor to ground it. And if the crystal size is better, uh, then you can put your sample directly on the sample holder. You can use the glass slit to press it. To make the sample surface is uh, the same height with the sample holder. After use the glass slit, you should throw it into the glass slit container. For the sample preparation area for bulk materials or thin film, you should do like this. First, you put the wax in the center of the sample holder to make sure it sticks tightly with the sample holder. And then put your sample on the surface of the wax. Then you use the glass slit to press tightly to make sure the surface of your sample is the same height with the sample holder. Good. If the sample amount is not enough or the crystallinity is not so good, you will use the zero background sample holder. The operation is same as the powder sample preparation process. The zero background sample holder is always in the box near the wall of B2 Fisher with the mark silicon 111. After the measurement, you should put it back to the same position. Then I will show you how to use the B2 Fisher machine. Uh, in this uh, video, we will use the standard sample program. And first, uh, let's show how to mount the sample. Here you can see this is the X-ray light. Now you can see it's off. It means that it's safety. So if in this situation, you can open the door. How to open the door? You can see here, there is one black button. You just pull it up. No response. Okay, if this in this situation, you should Hold down and then pull up this again. Then it will automatically open. When the door is open, this is the sample. You just put in the center of this position and you can rotate. See, it's stable. Then you move this lifter and then fix it. And here we also have one muff edge. 
you can see clearly this is three millimeter and this is one millimeter why we need to use this one because when you didn't use this one we will have the peak which is not to belong to your sample so if you want to measure the sample which the degree is below 15 you should use this one and how to install this one you see there are two holes here and you just uh, put the right position it's magnetic then the three millimeters should be in the bottom after mounting the sample and uh, after mounting the knife eye you should close the door how to close just uh, pull down you will hear a voice then it's closed then I will introduce uh, the interface of the measurement software. Here we can see the drag to theta phi and the variable rotation speed. The two theta means the position of the detector. The phi means the sample can be rotated in this direction. And this is the rotated uh, uh, speed. And uh, if you put your mouse here, you can see the speed uh, max minimum is zero and maximum is uh, 83. And next, it is the X-ray generator. Here, we will use uh, the voltage is 30 kV and the current is 10. Before the measurement, for the safety side, the X-ray is always off. So if you want to start the measurement, then you can click on. Wait for one minute. And the voltage and current will go to the target value. And uh, here you can see the X-ray light is on. For the X-ray source, we use copper and here we can see the wavelength is 1.54 Armstrong. It contains uh, KRP1 and KRP2. We don't have the monochromator on this uh, machine. And for the detector, we use Link Psi and it has uh, two models, 1D model and uh, zero model, zero D model. Uh, usually we will use uh, 1D model here. So to make sure it is 1D before your measurement. And here you can check the opening angle of the detector. You can see it is 190. It's full opening. Then close. If it's not full opening, you can check uh, here the PSD opening and uh, make sure this is the maximum. Okay, then we go to the scan setup. Here we can see the scan tab is coupled to theta and theta. We only use this one. And the scan model is continuous PSD first. And the parameter uh, you can set, parameter you can set is two theta, the start angle and the stop angle. For this sample, I will start from 20 and stop at uh, 80 degree. For the increment, uh, usually you can set to 0.02 or 0.01. After you set the start angle and uh, the stop angle, you can get the steps here. And then you can set the time for per step. If I set uh, it to 0.1, you can see the total time you will use for the uh, total measurement. If you think uh, this segment parameter is bad, good. Okay, after the parameter uh, set up, you can start your measurement. Here we have uh, one icon start. You just uh, click. Here the Y axis is counts. And uh, if you want to see the CPS, you can change here, toggle between counts and CPS. But usually we will use counts here. 
and uh, if the peak is not obvious, you can also change it to a log, square, or linear. We also have uh, another uh, option here. You can see it's auto repeat. Auto repeat means if you are not familiar with your sample, and you can go to a faster scan. And if you think the faster scan is good, then you can check the auto repeat, and you will go on a long measurement. Just uh, click and check. If you think the measurement is not good, you can uncheck here. After the measurement, uh, you should save your data here. File, save results. And uh, the data will stored in the D disk. And here you will build your own folder. and give the name of uh, this sample. Here you can save it as BRML, also you can save as uh, raw data. If you want to plot uh, this data in the orange software, you can save it uh, as the txt. You should save the data manually because the data will not save the automatically. So please make sure you save it. After you save the data, you want to measure another sample or you want to take your sample out. The first thing is that you should make the x-ray off here. And then you can see the x-ray is off. Then you can open the door and check your sample out. It's the same operation with the mounting the sample. Close the door. The knife edge is always here. Don't remove it out, okay? After the measurement, if you don't need your sample, you can throw your sample in the red trash bin. The last important thing is that you should clean the table, the sample preparation area and take all your stuff away with you. Don't leave anything here. Okay, thanks for joining this training.